If you thought Jeffrey Dahmer's crimes were disturbing, wait until you hear about this next case. Nathaniel Barjona Born February 15, 1957 in Worcester, Massachusetts. His birth name was actually David Paul Brown, but he changed it in 1991. From a young age, Nathaniel would show some concerning signs which would later develop into distressing crimes. As a kid, he was known to be quite an oddball. He showed interest in flesh and blood, and he would pick and suck on his scabs until his skin became infected. His mother received several calls from the school informing her that the students and teachers were offended by this tendency. A year later, in late July 1964, Nathaniel invited his five-year-old neighbor who was a girl to his basement, claiming that he had an Ouija board and that he could predict the future. Once down in the basement, he attempted to strangle the girl until her screams thankfully alerted his mother, who rushed down and rescued her however apparently he got off with little to no punishment. Sadly, that wasn't the last of it, as few years later when he was just 13 years old, he lured another six-year-old boy from the neighborhood to a nearby hill outside claiming he wanted to go sledding with him. Once they arrived at the secluded hill, he went on to physically violate the young boy. Through his young year he continued to cause havoc in truly horrific ways. During his final year of high school, Barjona impersonated a police officer for the first time and abducted eight-year-old Richard O'Connor while he was on his way to school, physically assaulting and strangling him inside his car. A neighbor watched the kidnapping and assault from a window and alerted the police. Officers rescued O'Connor when he was unconscious and nearly dead. Barjona was arrested and sentenced to few months of his probation. Only a few days before his graduation, as well as the conclusion of his term, Barjona drove to Hartford, Connecticut, and impersonated as a police officer again. This time, he abducted a nine-year-old girl and began to ape her in his car, but he threw her out soon afterward when she started to convulse and vomit. A witness grabbed the license plate of the vehicle and Barjona was later arrested. However, his probation officer never received the report on this arrest, and he was released from probation in May 1976 along with a letter expressing gratitude for his cooperation. September 24, 1977 Barjona impersonated an FBI agent again and falsely arrested two boys who were coming out of a movie theater. He drove them to a secluded area, where they were handcuffed. Barjona, who weighed 375 pounds at the time, left one of the boys in the car's trunk while he took the other away and simultaneously tried to strangle and suffocate him with his weight until he thought he had killed him. However, the boy actually pretended to be dead and was able to maintain the act even when Barjona started blowing cigarette ashes on his face. After Barjona left, the youngster ran away and reported him immediately to the police. Once again, he was taken into custody, and the second boy was saved. This time, Barjona was found guilty of attempted murder and given a prison term of 18 to 22 years. After being sent to prison, he was transferred to Bridgewater State Hospital which was a mental facility. Disturbingly, he told psychiatrists repeatedly about having sexual fantasies involving murder, torture, dissection, and cannibalism. Whilst he was still there, on March 22, 1984, he legally changed his name to Nathaniel Benjamin Levi Barjona instead of the David Paul Brown which he was named at birth. His reason for this was that he wanted to honor his Jewish heritage and he wanted to know what it was like to be discriminated against as a Jew. July 1991, he was released from the mental hospital. About a month after being released he was yet again back to his criminal twisted ways. Outside a post office in Oxford, he saw a seven-year-old boy sitting inside a car. Barjona entered the car and sat over the boy, but fled the scene after he noticed people had seen him. Luckily, his description was recognized by an officer who had arrested him 15 years earlier, and he was arrested again. He claimed the reason B entered the car was to avoid the rain, and he intended to wait for the driver to return to ask for a ride home. As for the boy, he said that he did not know he was there. However, worryingly, Barjona later admitted his intention was to kill the boy. For this incident, he was given two years on probation on the condition that he moved in with his mother in Great Falls, Montana and to never return to Massachusetts again. 
But would moving state really stop him with his twisted mind? With his troubled thoughts he began to collect mostly Star Wars toys and organized yard sales which would entice large groups of children. December 1993 He was accused of molestation by an eight-year-old boy who he was babysitting at the time. Barjona denied these allegations and stated if he had done those things he would have finished him off and killed him. The case was dropped after his lawyer claimed his right to a speedy trial had been violated. February 10, 1996. A 10-year-old boy named Zach Ramsey disappeared on his way to school. Witnesses at the time saw an off-white colored vehicle almost running the young boy over and later reported that he was tearful and appeared to have been followed by an overweight male around the time he went missing. A detective called Bill Belsusi, who investigated the December 1993 case was assigned to investigate the young boy's disappearance. Even though the detective was given a whole list of sex offenders in the area, he quickly dismissed it and centered his suspicion on Barjona who wasn't on the list. The police tried to enter the home of Barjona and his mother but were unsuccessful when trying to get a solicited search warrant for the property. Shortly after it was made clear that Barjona was using his mother's off-white Toyota Corolla and also that he was standing in an alleyway before Ramsey had entered it. Barjona was also wearing a navy jacket that day, similar to that of a police officer's, and was in constant close proximity of Ramsey. He had supposedly mentioned and Ramsey's name to an acquaintance a few days earlier before the boy disappeared. Belushi unsuccessfully solicited a new search warrant. Sometime later, Barjona moved out of his mother's house. December 13, 1999. Once again, Barjona was spotted outside an elementary school for the third time in a few days. Wearing the same dark blue jacket and a knit cap, carrying pepper spray, a toy gun and a badge. Despite the doubts of their colleagues, Belushi and the Attorney General charged Barjona with impersonating an officer and carrying a concealed weapon. Finally, with this arrest, a judge approved a search warrant for impersonation objects in both Barjona's mother's house and his new address. Here, they found two coats, a stun gun and a baseball cap reading, security enforcement. Along with these items, some more weird things were found including a pulley on the ceiling, two albums with cutouts of children and two documents based on bondage and autoerotic asphyxia. A couple days later, Belushi was granted a second search warrant, specifically for any documents and photographic material. Apart from the albums, they also found a list of boys' names which shockingly included three names of the boys he had already abused. One also had a name for Zachary Ramsey, next to the word died. So what is the significance of the other names on the list? Continuing the search, investigators found around 3,500 photographs of children, multiple news cutouts from Ramsey's disappearance, an undeveloped film containing sexual images of Barjona and three boys who were unidentified. A book was also found but was written in code but was eventually cracked and revealed cookbook recipes with titles such as Little Boy Pot Pie, Barbecued Kid, and Little boy stew. A stained plank of wood was recovered which looked like it scrubbed with bleach and struck with a weapon resembling a meat cleaver. A luminol test in the garage was done and revealed that the word, Tata, had once been written on the floor which they linked to James Tata who was a 15-year-old boy who was found abused and killed in Ringe, New Hampshire in 1973. Bone fragments were also found of a young boy between the ages of 8 and 13 but were not identified. So based from the finds, detectives theorized that Barjona stalked and killed little kids and used them in recipes. To make things even worse, Nathaniel hosted a cookout for his neighbors where he served deer burgers, which was claimed to have tasted a little off. He had told them he hunted the deer himself, but he didn't even have a hunting license nor a rifle. It was also claimed that he had not purchased food for around a month since Ramsey's disappearance. Not only was there plenty of related evidence, to top things off, a former roommate claimed to have seen a pair of red liquid-covered gloves and some soiled clothing which happened to match Ramsey's clothes on the day of his disappearance. Barjona had also bought up Zach's name multiple times before and after the incident. Shockingly, also claiming that the boy would never be found as he chopped up and scattered the parts in different places. The young boy, 
Zach Ramsey's mother profusely refused to believe that her son was dead or that Barjona was in any way related to his disappearance. She even went to lengths to see a psychic who convinced her that her son was in Italy and went to lengths that she would defend Barjona in trial if he was brought forward for her son's murder. After this, the charges were dropped and authorities focused on other possible victims. Two names found on the list lived in the same apartment building as Barjona and were also in the photographic film. One of the boys said he invited them over for a sleepover, then violated them. Confusingly, the other boy visited him in jail and claimed that Nathaniel was his friend and he never harmed him. Finally, he was charged with sexual assault, aggravated kidnapping, and assault with a deadly weapon where he hung a boy on his pulley system in his kitchen. He was convicted and sentenced in 2002 to 130 years in prison without possibility of parole. But six years later, on April 13, 2008, he was found dead in his cell, suffering from a heart attack due to his super high cholesterol. So how did the boy supposedly go to Italy? Did he even have money or a passport? Three years later, Ramsey's father had him declared legally dead over the opposition of his mother. Thanks for watching and comment below for another case you would like to see.